Logic Pro is awesome for making music, but some of the settings it comes with out of the box are illogical. Yes, thank you, thank you. And after over 10 years of using this software, I'm gonna show you the settings you should change right now to make your music making life a whole lot easier, shall we? First things first, you'll want to go into your settings and enable advanced features, which you can find right here. You want to click on enable complete features. Even if you're just a toddler playing around in the sand right now, enabling these advanced features will make you feel like you're David Guetta. And even though you won't sound like David Guetta yet, you'll be able to do a whole lot more helpful things with editing, mixing, and customization. Turn this on. The next hot topic setting that I see everyone and their mom talk about on the line is the IO buffer size. And yes, it's important, but I've got a slightly different viewpoint than most. To get there, we'll go to Logic Pro, Settings, Audio. And here's how it works. As you decrease this number, the resulting latency goes down, but the harder your computer will have to work to keep things playing smoothly. Common wisdom and advice would say to keep your buffer size as low as possible while recording to minimize latency. And then as you're mixing, you want to increase it so that your computer doesn't run into playback problems. Totally solid advice. However, it's way too many steps. Working like this means every time I want to record, I have to go into this stupid ass menu and then change the settings. And then every time I want to mix, I have to go back in and then change it back. Lamo. And what's more is even at the lowest IO settings, you're still dealing with some sort of resulting latency, even with really good computers. This means that even after I recorded, I would have to adjust my voice back eight milliseconds. Now, this is totally fine if you like wasting time or if you like pounding your head against the wall. But for most sane people, I recommend the following. Set your buffer size as high as it can go. That way your computer can process all of the tracks it's playing with no problem. But buddy, won't that result in too much latency? <laughs> I don't know what kind of accent that was, but yes, yes it will. But I've got a fix for that and I'll show you how we'll deal with that latency in a second. For now, just set it to 1024 and you're good to go. Next up, we're gonna wanna change our control bar and display. These are these little tiny buttons you can press up at the top here. To do that, click on this little carrot, click on Customize Control Bar and Display, and you'll get a nice dialog box pop-up with all of the possible setting changes. Here are some of the big ones I recommend. I like to keep all of my views on so I can see them. For transport, that's your recording, your stopping and starting of the song. I like stop, play, record, free tempo, well, free tempo recording, you don't need that one, and cycle. I like to keep it simple. For the LCD, this is something that's probably customizable to you, but the key ones I'd recommend are these. Tempo, time signature, key signature, and performance meter, which will show you how well your computer's performing. Now, here's where we get into the more advanced settings. For the love of all things rhythm, please turn on your metronome and your count in. And for the love of all things tunedness, or if you play an instrument that needs tuning, like a guitar, I recommend turning on the tuner. And the most important thing to turn on, which will fix our IO buffer problem, is low latency monitoring mode. Wow. Yes, you can mess around with some of these in the, in the future, but honestly, I don't use any of these other ones. This is the only one you need. When we turn this on, it adds this nifty looking little stopwatch up to the top that we can turn on and off whenever we want to. Also to lock in these settings, you can go save as default, and then anytime you open a project, it will open up these settings. Helpful. Remember how we had almost 50 milliseconds of latency? Well, Logic recognizes that latency, and whenever we turn on low latency monitoring mode, it will compensate for that and move our recordings back that specific amount. This gives us perfectly in-time recordings without having to go into that stupid audio settings window every time. We just have to make sure that it's turned on while we record, and that's it. To make sure it's on, just make sure that you click the button and it's orange. Now, this mode isn't a perfect fix for this because it will turn off some key features of your project and it won't sound exactly the same as if it was off. It also has the unfortunate benefit of disabling some plugins you might wanna hear while recording. Some of the biggest being pitch correction, reverb, and other computer intense things. But there is some wiggle room with this and you can adjust it slightly. To do so, go into Logic Pro, go into settings, go into audio. Then click on the general tab here and you'll be able to find low latency monitoring mode here. You can set your limit to the highest possible and that's what I'd recommend as 30 milliseconds. This will give you the benefits of low latency monitoring mode while also allowing you to hear some of your plugins like 
pitch correction, like reverb, etc. It's the best of both worlds, like friggin' Hannah Montana. So I highly, highly recommend working in this way. It's so much easier just to click on this button or click it off as you're mixing or recording, etc. And remember, while you're recording, low latency mode on. And if you're not recording and you're just mixing, then turn it off. It's that simple. And it's just this one little button. Way easier. Am I right? Come on. And if you thought that was the only nifty setting we'll change today, you were incorrect. Because next up, we're going to talk about the MIDI chase feature. If you've ever started a song in the middle of a MIDI chord, you know that normally it won't play at all. Check this out. Nothing. But there's actually a setting to change to fix that problem, and it's called MIDI Chase. Even though MIDI Chase sounds like a low-grade action movie film, it's actually just a project setting you can change in Logic. This is in project settings for each track rather than the general settings, which you can find from File, Project Settings, MIDI. Click on the Chase tab here to open it up, then click on Notes. That's all you need. Now, when you start it in the middle, you can hear it plays. Wow. <laughs> Keep in mind that this sound may change slightly while using MIDI Chase rather than what it sounds like if you were to play it normally. For example, if I start it from the beginning, that's going to have the major transient, or if I start it from the middle, it's going to play that major transient right away. Your results may vary, but it can be helpful to do this. Still helpful for the majority of cases. Next up, we're going to change our tool slots to be the cursor on the left, which you can find up here, and the marquee tool on the right, or in other words, our command click. I do a bunch of things with the marquee tool and I find it the most helpful by far. I actually think that this default tool setting is the default. I said default twice, but if it's not, then go change it because this is what I'd recommend. And next up, I have another setting that Logic should just change to by default because it annoys me to no end. Let me explain. When you select a default instrument from the library, many of them come with built-in reverb and reverb buses. You can see them already added here on the inspector window. And you can also see them if you open up the mixer window, the buses here. But Logic's default will send them to the first buses that are available. But here's the problem. When I open up my bus, I don't wanna see these stock reverbs clogging up my screen space. Especially if you have multiple stock instruments, these can add up very fast. And to be honest, the stock reverbs aren't always that great. But luckily for us, there's a fix we can do to get around this. To change this setting, we're gonna go into settings, audio, general, and we're going to go automatic bus assignment uses from all buses. And what I like to do is buses above 32. This will route all those stupid reverbs that come on the stock presets to start at bus 32 and clean up the space for our own purposes. Let's change this one and show you what I mean. Now, if we click on one, you can see that the buses are bus 34 and 35 instead of bus two and three. That means when I go in here, I don't see anything. They still have the reverb and I can still access them by going here, but they clean up the space and make it way easier for me to add my own buses on the default. They're there, but they're out of the way like a well-behaved dog. These next few things I'll show you are optional and more about customization than functionality, but they offer some ease of use settings I find very helpful. If you go into settings and view, you can customize a bunch of settings to your little heart's content. I personally like to use large inspectors. Then under tracks, I like to add horizontal lines to be a little bit bigger than normal. I also sometimes will check on show track or bar number while scrolling. Its default is off and sometimes it can be annoying with it on, but it can be cool. And occasionally, if I'm feeling particularly artsy, I will change my track color to auto assign to 24 or 96 colors. That means each time I make a track, it will change the color automatically, which can look really nice. Let me just make a bunch of audio tracks. Wow, amazing. I really only do this on vocal projects to break up the monotony of having like a hundred vocal tracks in a row, but that's really it. Most of the time I leave this off so I can auto assign the colors to my preferred patent pending color system. And it's not, it's not actually patent pending. Anyone can use it, but just how I organize my tracks in in my brain. And last but not least, for those producers that have third-party plugins, you're going to want to watch this next part. Logic's plugin management system is garbage. Yeah, it's it's trash. You have to go through multiple menus to find the actual thing that you want. And if you've got a lot of plugins from one particular vendor, then it makes it a real pain in the ass to find the exact plugin. But you can work around this if you customize your plugin folders. You can go in there, settings, and plugin manager. All you have to do is do this one time, go into your plugin folder and drag and drop your favorite plugins. Let's say 
oh, I want to put doubler into my pitch plugin and bada bang, you can find it there every time. We'll click done. Now, if I go into my pitch folder, you can see doubler. Way faster than navigating through all those stupid menus. <laughs> I feel like I've been harsh towards logic in this video, but it's generally a really good dot. It's, it's my favorite. So go change those settings and like and save this video so that future you can remember these settings that I've just mentioned. If you really want to maximize your efficiency in Logic Pro, you should watch this video I made right up here that will show you how to 10x your workflow in Logic.